Pulp Vitality Tests Pulp testing involves attempting to make a determination of the responsiveness of pulpal sensory neurons. Now next let's talk about some newer advances in pulp testing methods. Laser Doppler Flowmetry LDF is a non-invasive method used to assess blood flow in microvascular systems. Attempts are being made to adapt this technology to assess pulpal blood flow. So this is an image of a laser Doppler flow meter. In the second image here you can see this is an LDF probe showing laser light guides. And in the third image this is an LDF probe applied to a section tooth showing the passage of light by the enamel prisms and dentinal tubules to the pulp. Now let's take a look at the principle of laser Doppler flowmetry, how it functions. The Doppler principle states that the light beam's frequency will shift when hitting moving red blood cells but it will remain unshifted as it passes through static tissue. So the red cylinder here is the light source. Red light is emitted from a light source. If the light beam is scattered off of stationary tissue or cells then there is no shift in the light spectrum whereas if the light hits a moving cell in a blood vessel like an RBC then there is a shift in the light spectrum of the scattered light according to the Doppler flowmetry and this scatter will be detected by the photo detector. So a diode is used to project an infrared light beam through the crown and pulp chamber of a tooth the infrared light beam is scattered as it passes through the pulp tissue. The average Doppler frequency shift will measure the velocity at which the red blood cells are moving. In this next image you can see this is an LDF trace which shows signals from two teeth. So the upper one is from a vital tooth and the lower one is from a non-vital tooth. The advantages of laser Doppler flowmetry is that the collected data are based on objective findings rather than subjective patient responses. And also LDF is an accurate, reliable and reproducible method of assessing pulpal blood flow. It has been shown to be a great indicator for pulpal vitality in cases of luxation injuries which cause inaccuracies in the results of electric and thermal pulp testing. Another method of pulp vitality testing is pulse oximetry. Pulse oximetry is a non-invasive method designed to measure the oxygen concentration in the blood and the pulse rate in medicine. In the image here you can see this is a pulse oximeter. It works by transmitting two wavelengths of light, the red light and an infrared light which passes through translucent portion of a patient's body like for example a finger, earlobe or tooth which is then detected by the photo detector. The light purple rectangle in the center is the photo detector and the black region is the sensor which sends the signals to the microprocessor which quantifies the data and provides the result. So some of that light is absorbed as it passes through the tissue and the amount of absorbed light depends on the ratio of oxygenated to deoxygenated hemoglobin in the blood. On the opposite side of the targeted tissue a sensor detects the absorbed light. On the basis of the difference between the light emitted and the light received a microprocessor calculates the pulse rate and oxygen concentration in the blood. The transmission of light to the sensor requires that there be no obstruction from restorations which can sometimes limit the usefulness of pulse oximetry to test pulp vitality. <laughs> Hence custom made sensors have been developed which are found to be more accurate than electric and thermal pulp tests. This sensor has been specially useful in evaluating teeth that have been subjected to traumatic injuries as such teeth tend to present specially in the short term with questionable vitality using conventional pulp testing methods. Next moving on to other special tests such as percussion and bite test. 
These are indicated when a patient presents with pain while biting. So for the bite test to be meaningful, a device should be used that will allow the clinician to apply pressure to individual cusps or areas of the tooth. A variety of devices have been used for bite tests including cotton tip applicators, toothpicks, orange wood sticks and rubber polishing wheels. And there are several devices specifically designed to perform this test like for example the tooth sleuth and frac finder. So this percussion test or bite test helps to localize the tooth involved when the patient does not know which tooth is sensitive to biting pressure. So if periradicular parenthitis is present, the tooth will respond with pain to percussion and biting tests regardless of where the pressure is applied to the coronal part of the tooth. Whereas a cracked tooth or fractured cusp will typically elicit pain only when the percussion or bite test is applied in a certain direction to one cusp or section of the tooth. The next test is test cavity which is used for assessing pulp vitality but it is not routinely used since by definition it is an invasive irreversible test. So an example of a situation in which this method can be used is when the tooth suspected of having pulpal disease has a full coverage crown. If no sound tooth structure is available to use a bridging technique with the electric pulp tester and cold test results are inconclusive, then in these cases a small class 1 cavity preparation is made through the occlusal surface of the crown. If the patient feels pain once the burr contacts sound dentine, so the procedure is terminated and the class 1 preparation is restored. Whereas if the patient fails to feel any sensation when the burr reaches the dentine, then it indicates that the pulp is necrotic and root canal therapy is indicated. And lastly, selective anesthesia. So if the patient cannot determine which arch the pain is coming from, then the clinician should first selectively anesthetize the maxillary arch, which is accomplished by using a parental ligament, intraligamentary injection. So the injection is administered to the most posterior tooth in the quadrant of the arch that may be suspected, starting from the distal sulcus. The anesthesia is subsequently administered in an anterior direction one tooth at a time until the pain is eliminated. And if the pain is not eliminated after appropriate period of time then repeat for the mandibular teeth. So selective anesthesia can be used in cases when the patient may not be even able to specify whether the symptoms are emanating from the maxillary or mandibular arch. So these were various methods of pulp vitality tests. There is no single test which can be considered as the gold standard for detecting pulp vitality and a combination of two to three tests should be done in order to determine the condition of the pulp and accordingly plan a treatment strategy. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.